Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part video where I go over the equations of motion for a cart pull system, or how to derive the equations of motion for a cart pull system. In the previous video, I described a cart pull and then went over some mathematical symbols for that we're going to use throughout the derivation, um, drew some free body diagrams, and then used the Newton-Euler equations to write out some expressions that relate those forces to accelerations. In this video, we're going to go over the algebra that's needed to go from equations in this form down to the final um, expression for x double dot and theta double dot. The first thing we need to figure out is something to sub in for this p1 double dot and p2 double dot. So we get to p1 by simply taking the position, well, it's the position of the cart, so x is the position of the cart along the rail, and we simply multiply that by the direction of travel, which is i hat. Then we can take derivatives to get the velocity and the acceleration, um, simply x dot and x double dot in the i direction. p2, or the position of the tip of the pendulum, is given by p1 plus a distance l in the e hat direction. Again, to get the velocity and acceleration of p2, we just take derivatives, where this p1 dot and p1 double dot are defined over here, and we can take derivatives of this. L is constant, so those derivative terms drop out, and we're left with the acceleration is the acceleration of point 0.1 plus L times e hat double dot. Now, finding e hat double dot is a little bit tricky, and that's what this whole section here is about. We start by finding an expression for e hat and n hat in terms of theta and the inertial reference frame, i or j. So e hat is going to be sine theta in the i direction minus cosine theta in the j direction. I always find it a bit tricky to get the signs right on these terms, so I do a check. In this case, let's say theta is zero. In this case, the pendulum is going to point straight down in the negative j direction. So we would expect that to be true if we subbed in over here. Theta of zero, sine theta of zero is zero, cosine theta of zero is one, and sure enough, e hat is negative j when theta is zero. Um, you can do the same check for um, theta equals pi over two to show that indeed e hat points in the um, positive i direction. And then you can do the same sort of checks to get um, this n hat vector. Then we simply start taking derivatives. So the derivative of e hat is we can go term by term and use the chain rule. Sine theta is going to be cosine theta, negative cosine theta is sine, and then the chain rule tells us we need to multiply each of those by theta dot. Now if you look carefully, you'll see that this term here is simply n hat multiplied by theta dot, and that's what we have here. Um, that's a nice little um, trick that if you've defined your body reference frame right, that'll always happen. Now, to take a second derivative, we just differentiate this. We have to use the product rule here because both terms vary with time. So, um, derivative of the first term times the second one, we get this. First term times the derivative of the second term, we get that. Now. We want to get rid of all of the derivatives of unit vectors here, so we're going to substitute in this n hat down here and get this expression here. Um, now that we have e hat double dot, we can plug that into p2, and then we can plug those back into these equations. Now, starting from these equations, you have five equations and five unknowns. Um, three unknowns for forces, normal and tx and ty and then also your two unknown accelerations, x double dot and theta double dot. There are a huge number of ways of simplifying these equations to solve for x double dot and theta dot, double dot, and I'm just going to show you one way that I happen to know works, but you could come up with many other ways. The first thing I'm going to do is take equation one, the force balance in the cart, and dot it with the direction i. So this is just essentially writing the horizontal component of this equation. And that's going to look like this. Um, P1 is already in the i hat direction, so i hat dot i hat is 1, and we're left with m1 x double dot. A nice simple equation for our first one. 
The next thing is to just do that same procedure on the second equation for the for the cart for the pole. And um, what you find here is a very similar looking thing, except we have p2 double dot. So p2 double dot is a little bit more complicated because we're going to substitute in that um, accelerating unit vector. And um, let's just go over how to do i hat dot n hat because that's a little bit confusing. So up until this point, I've just substituted things in. So i hat dot n, because the, these other terms pull through. If we scroll up here, i hat dot n, well, we just go term by term. i hat multiplied by i hat dot i hat is 1. j hat dot with i is 0. And we're left with cosine theta. And that's what we get here. And you can do the same thing to show that i hat dotted with e hat is just sine theta. Now we have our second equation, it's a scalar equation, in terms of the two unknowns that we want. But we've also got this other unknown, t sub x, laying around in both of these equations. So we're going to need one more scalar equation to get rid of that. And the equation that we're going to do this with is this um, torque balance equation. And we're going to dot it with k hat, which is the only non-zero direction in it. I've done a few substitutions here. For example, p2, hat, p2 minus p1 is l times e hat. And the weight is simply mass times gravity. Um, I can pull these constant terms out through, and I'm left with e hat cross j. This is something that I found relatively confusing until I realized, again, you can just do this um, term by term. So e hat crossed with j. i cross j is just 1. j cross j is 0. And we're left with e hat cross j is just sine theta. And we can plug that in and get this nice term. Um, we have to do the same substitution for p2 double dot, which is a little bit complicated, but it's the same sort of thing. We can do um, a few more cross products, and it simplifies out to this expression here. And then we can divide through by ml to get this final equation here. Now we have three equations, three unknowns, and we want to get rid of t sub x because we don't really care what that is. Um, so one easy way to do that is to take equation 1, solve it for t sub x, and just plug it into the left-hand side of equation 2. And that's what I've done here. And then I've just expanded out some terms to see how things are related to each other. Then the last step is simply to rewrite this equation and this equation um, in matrix form. And this just makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, and if you're not familiar with matrix form, it's not too bad. It just means um, that you take this vector and multiply it into this matrix. So if we just go over the first line, that would be x double dot multiplied by cosine theta. So that's that term. And then you add it to theta double dot multiplied by L. That's that term. And then it's equal to just the top line here. So now we're done. We've got a nice simple expression for x double dot and theta double dot. Um, if you wanted, you could analytically invert this, but the math gets a little bit messy there, and it doesn't particularly make it easier to understand. Um, and with this, you can then run a simulation or design a controller. So now you know how to derive the equations of motion for a cart pole.